Good morning and thank you for your assistance. And welcome to the session Nano One Nanomaterials and Applications. And I hope you enjoy the talks. Our first speaker is Jesse de Oliveira. Jesse, Jesse, is here? Yes, I'm here. Yes. Please, uh, you can share your screen and please start when you want. To. Uh, okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good morning. My, my name is Jesse de Oliveira Damião. I'm a master's student at Central University of Fe in Brazil. Um, and today I will present this work entitled Electrical Characterization of NMOS Fats from uh, 180 nanometers commercial technology at low temperatures. This work has a collaboration of Professor Pavanello and Souza. Um, first of all, thank you so much for this opportunity. And I hope you enjoy this presentation. Uh, well, this work is divided into five talks. Uh, introduction, objective, device details and methodology, follow, followed by results and discussion, and finally, conclusions. Well, uh, one of the most interesting applications of cryogenic electronics is uh, quantum computing. Quantum computing uh, presents more efficiency in terms of time, space, and operations compared to the classical computing. Uh, uh, a quantum computer consists on quantum processor that operates at extremely low temperatures, around millikelvins, and a classical controller that operates at room temperature. So, uh, uh, because of the difference the temperature difference of the quantum processor and the classical controller, uh, an intermediate controller is required. Uh, for this purpose, purpose a Cryosimus controller was proposed. This Cryosimus controller mediates the communication between quantum processor and classical controller, ensuring the fidelity and low power consumption, right? Uh, between several technologies, the CMOS technology has shown promise to, uh, due to its ability to integrate billions and, uh, of transistors with low energy consumption. So that's one of the reasons for interest in study transistor characterization at low temperatures. So uh, this work aims solely to observe how electrical parameters of transistor of different dimensions are affected by temperature variation, right? Well, uh, the devices uh, were studied in this work were manufactured in a 180 nanometers commercial technology. Uh, they are five transistors with channel widths uh, with, uh, of th uh, three micrometers and with five uh, channel lengths. The conditions of characterization is the bias condition. Gate to source voltage range from minus 0 0.5 volts to 1.5 volts. Drain to source voltage was set to 50 millivolts. And but to source voltage was set to zero volts. The uh, temperature variation ranged from 300 Kelvin to 80 Kelvin. Well, um, 
I will start talking about the series resistance. First of all, the on resistance, the total resistance, is presented in this figure as a function of the channel length for all temperatures. Uh, you can observe that the the trend the this parameter is decrease uh, with a channel length shortening, right? And the and you can observe that the the on resistance is uh, is higher for higher temperatures, right? And the series resistance was extract extrapolating the new linear trend to the points where ch uh, channel length is equal to zero, where by definition the uh, the channel resistance is z uh, zero, right? Um, this uh, this met extraction method was chosen because the drain and source regions are heavily doped and have a negligible partial carrier neutralization, right? Uh, this source resistance, that is source and drain uh, resistance, uh, it, uh, was used to do a compensation on drain current curves using this formula. Uh, f before the extraction, extraction the other parameters, right? Well, um, this uh, is uh, the uh, the uh, drain current and transcontinuous curves. You can observe that for um, low temperatures, at low temperatures, the drain current levels is higher, right? And you can observe that. Um, you observe that the threshold region is uh, uh, is steeper at low temperatures, and you can observe and you can observe that the transcontinuity is higher at low term temperatures. What expected, right? And you can observe that the degradation is higher at low temperatures, especially in the strong. Uh, version region, right? Well, um, the threshold voltage is presented in this figure as a function of temperature for all devices. You can observe that the threshold voltage decreases at low temperature, sorry, uh, threshold voltage increases at low uh, temperatures. Um, it happens because the threshold voltage depend on firm potential, and firm potential depend on intrinsic carrier concentration. At low temperatures, the intrinsic carrier concentration uh, decreases. It results on increasing firm potential, and it results on increasing threshold voltage. Right? And uh, here, uh, we can assert that uh, threshold voltage is higher for shorter devices. It happens because the dopant accumulation in short devices is higher. Well, uh, here we have the subthreshold slope. Subthreshold slope is presented in this figure as a function of temperature for all devices. And here is presented the extract values and the theoretical limits. Theoretical limits was calculated with the ideality, uh, with ideality factor, the n equal to one. Uh, and we can observe that the extractive values have the same trend of theoretical limits. So the threshold slope decreases with a decreasing temperature, right? Um, so uh, an important thing that I, I need to tell is that threshold slope uh, presents a saturation below 100 Kelvin because uh, the impact of the depletion interface and oxy capacitance becomes more uh, intense in this, at these temperatures, right? Uh, 
uh, well, uh, the low field carrier mobility is presented in this figure as a function of temperature for all devices. You can observe that the mobility uh, increases at low temperatures. Uh, so it is a, uh, a good, uh, good thing. Uh, the increase in mobility is a improvement, improvement of uh, mobility. Um, it happens because at low temperatures, the less vibrations are reduced, right? And you can observe that the increase in mobility differs between devices. For longer devices, uh, the uh, increase in mobility is oh, better. Uh, the, the longer the channel length, the greater the increase in mobility, right? This happens due to the neutral defect scattering. Uh, because of the neutral defect scattering, uh, this type of scattering is strongly dependent on channel length. Uh, right. Um, this is the first order mobility degra degradation factor. Um, you can have said that uh, this factor represents the mobility degradation due to uh, funnel and column scattering. You can observe that this factor uh, presents a bit, uh, bit variation with temperature, especially on longer devices. The, for longer devices, this uh, parameter is almost constant with temperature variation. Uh, the, the shorter device presents a bit more variation, right? Uh, right. Uh, the second order mobility degradation factor is presented in this figure. You can observe that this parameter is more dependent on temperature. Um, uh, at low temperatures, this parameter presents higher values. Uh, this parameter represents the mobility degradation due to funnel and scattering, uh, funnel scattering and surface harness. <clears throat> uh, you can observe that the longer the channel length, the higher the values of the this uh, the second factor at low temperatures, right? And at higher temperatures, this factor is higher for short devices, right? Ah, uh, and this uh, it happens because uh, carriers experience more intense surface scattering. Uh, because they uh, transit closer to the interface at low temperatures. And I will talk about the zero coefficient of temperature, the ZTC. Um, it is, the ZTC is the point where the, by definition, is the, where is the point where, uh, is the point where the Guide by, guide, uh, gate bias provides the same current level at all temperatures. Uh, is important. Uh, it is important because it's very promising for analog projects, right? Uh, this happens because um, at low temperatures, you have seen that threshold voltage increases. And it results on decreasing drain current. In other hand, at low temperatures, mobility increases, and it results on uh, increasing drain current. Uh, so, uh, uh, so the decreasing 
drain current due to threshold voltage and increasing drain current due to mobility. Uh, both effects cancel each other in the same point at all temperatures in the same gate bias, right? This is the ZC. And this, uh, this table shows the extract ZTC for all devices. And we can observe that the ZTC is higher for shorter devices, right? You can, you can see the uh, ZTC of drain current and transcontinuous curves. Well, um, well uh, that being said, the conclusion is the temperature variation sig significantly impacts the electrical parameters. Some of these parameters show improvement with decreased temperature. You can tell about subtraction slope, that subtraction slope decreases at low temperatures. And it means that the device switching is better, right? Uh, decreasing subtraction slope means uh, the, uh, uh, improvement at uh, 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 device switching improvement, right? And the mobility uh, improves at low temperatures. At low temperatures, the mobility uh, increases, right? But the mobility degradation is higher, right? Okay. Well, that's it. Uh, thanks so much for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jose, for your interesting talk. Uh, we have time for one question. You too. If you want to participate, and you, you have participation, no? Virtual? Yeah. Any question? I have a question. Uh, what kind of materials um, do you use in your device? Um, in particular? Um, uh, uh, sorry, I, I, sorry, I, I don't know, uh, the object of my, my work is only study the characterization of the transit, the transistors characterization. Okay, but I don't, you don't know the material, Semiconductor metal side. You said uh, in the transistor. Uh, sorry, can you repeat, please? Yes, uh, for the transistor, uh, what kind of material is make? You don't know. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, Normally, a transistor is made of a silicon. Yeah. Right. So, but uh, the uh, gate oxidant, uh, there is very, uh, there is now, uh, there is several materials of gate, uh, gate oxidant of these transistors. Uh, wait a minute, please. Yes. Uh, wait, wait. Um, here. Uh, normally, uh, Galaxy is a uh, uh, the gate oxy is, uh, is made of uh, silicon silicon and 
oxigênio é, e metal whatever and here uh, silicon but uh, this this material uh, the uh, uh, there is uh, several materials for this this gate oxidy now for better uh, dielectric constant right okay Another question? In the case of soft threshold slope, I saw that the theoretical values was calculated with n equal to 1 in slash 10. Uh, 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 sorry. Uh, re uh, repeat, please. Sorry. Yes. Why do you use uh, in the theoretical values n equal to one for the calculation of the subthreshold slope? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, why I, I I use the the one? Yes. Ah, uh, uh, for uh, better comprehension. Only. And the uh, results are consistent. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, uh, thanks again, Jesse. Oh, well, uh, thanks so much for this opportunity. Thank you. The next speaker, Jose Honor in Lesbara, is here. Yes, he's here. Please, again, can you hear your screen? It's dark when you want to come. Okay, uh, one moment. Ah, one You can see my presentation? Yes, we can see your presentation. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Uh, um, you know, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jose Juan Aviles Bravo. Today, I'm going to present my work titled Effect of the Thermic and Ambient Temperature on the Composition and Luminescence Properties of Silicon Rich Nitro on Oxides uh, Films. Uh, this presentation contains uh, the introduction, experiment and details, result and discussion, conclusion and reference. So, the introduction. Uh, the silicon nanoparticulates embedded in the electric matrix had become an excellent alternative for the below light emitting devices compatible with the silicon basic technology. These devices uh, uh, were obtained using different dielectric matrix, uh, such as uh, silicon rich oxide, silicon rich nitro, and silicon carbonate. In this work, we focus on uh, these two dielectric matrix, silicon rich oxide and silicon rich nitro. Um, there are uh, two many factors that affect the luminescence properties of these materials. The, the fifth factor is uh, the silicon concentration in the electric matrix. Uh, suppose uh, we have uh, the electric matrix and silicon excess concentration. Uh, that results in excess silicon atoms and nucleation points in the electric matrix. So, we have a uh, more silicon excess concentration, uh, more silicon, uh, not excess silicon atoms and nucleation points there will be in the electric matrix. Uh, 
the second uh, factor is uh, thermic annealing condition, uh, time, temperature, and atmosphere. Um, these conditions will determine how the excess silicon atoms uh, will diffusion to nucleation points, uh, allowing uh, the formation uh, silicon nanoparticles. Uh, depending on these two factors, uh, amorphous or crystalline silicon nanoparticles will be formed in the dielectric matrix. Um, the size of the silicon nanoparticles is also depend on the silicon excess concentration. Uh, controlling the size of silicon nanoparticles and their nature is very important because the uh, electrical and optical properties of the material dependent on them. In the particular, the energy emission or photoluminescence depending on the size of the silicon nanoparticles. So, uh, um, the study of, of these two many factors is very important to improve the luminescent properties of these materials. In this work, uh, we compare the silicon-rich oxides and the silicon-rich nitrure with different uh, silicon excess concentration and different temperature of the thermic anel. In this experiment, uh, the silicon-rich oxides and the silicon-rich nitrure uh, were deposited by uh, LPCD. Uh, this technique, uh, the, the, the field formed, are formed the two uh, precursor uh, gas gas. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, for silicon rich oxides, precursor gas are silane and oxidon nitru, uh, nitrux oxides. The silicon rich nitrure uh, using precursor gas, uh, silane, and ammonia. Uh, controlling the, the, the flow rate, uh, the, the precursor gas, um, I can change the silicon concentration in the electric matrix. This factor um, um, allows uh, to know the silicon, uh, the silicon concentration, the silicon excess concentration in the electric matrix. Uh, lower valor is more silicon excess in the electric matrix. Uh, after the positions, uh, all samples were uh, subjected to the thermic anel. In this process, uh, we varied the temperature. Uh, this temperature uh, used for the silicon rich oxides, and this temperature the for, uh, used for the silicon rich nitrogen. Um, after thermic anelli, all samples were uh, characterized. Um, the refract index, the Fourier transport infrared spectroscopy, transmittance, and uh, photoluminescence. Um, the resultant discussion. Um, the PIPS characterization is refractive index. In this figure, show the refractive index uh, with the, the flow rate uh, before thermic annealing. Uh, the refractive index values of the, the electric matrix stoichiometric and the silica is about uh, these values. So, the silicon excess within an electric matrix uh, produce an increasing in the refractive index values. Uh, so, these, uh, these films uh, had uh, more silicon excess than the other fields. Uh, has planted uh, the fabricated uh, process. The second uh, characterization is the Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy. This technique 
uh, allows uh, to identify the vibration modes of the molecules present in the films. The spectral uh, in this figure show uh, exhibit uh, uh, all vibration modes. Uh, the, the vibration modes uh, one and three uh, are observed in all the has deposited the silicon rich network films. These uh, vibration modes are typical of the silicon network. The vibration modes uh, five and six have a low intensity uh, and disappear after thermic annealing. Uh, because the hydrogen uh, present in the, the electric matrix uh, disappear and of the high temperature. Uh, vibration modes uh, two and four increasing their intensity uh, after thermic annealing indicate an structural reordering. Uh, this indicate uh, the fast separate between the silicon nitro and silicon. Uh, possibly that the formation the silicon nanoparticles. Uh, in the case the silicon rich oxides uh, in the spectral uh, exhibit all uh, vibration modes. The typical vibration modes relation to, to the silicon and oxides are observed and has deposited silicon rich oxide field and vibration modes one, two, and four. Uh, uh, the, the vibration mode stretching, asymmetric stretching modes, uh, exhibit a shift towards higher frequency uh, with increasing the temperature. Uh, this change is indicate the, the formation of the silicon nanoparticles in the electric matrix. Another characterization uh, is uh, transmittance and band gap optical. In this figure, it shows the transmittance, uh, the both layers. Uh, using the transmittance spectrum, uh, the optical band gap was obtained by using uh, the tau plot. Uh, in this figure, show the band gap, op the optical band gap, uh, with the uh, flu rate. Uh, the band gap of the silicon rich oxide and the silicon rich nitro films reducing as the flu rate decreasing. Uh, disagreed uh, with the literature. The band gap values of the silicon rich nitro films are lower than the silicon oxide films. Uh, another characterization is uh, photoluminescence. Uh, in this figure, show the best luminescence properties of the fields. In the case, the silicon rich nitro uh, was uh, after, no, before uh, thermic annealing or has deposited, and the silicon rich oxides uh, after thermic annealing at uh, 1150 um, degrees Celsius. Uh, uh, in this figure, show the spectral, the photoluminescent spectral, the uh, for the silicon-rich nitro. The maximum photoluminescent intensity is obtained for the flu rate equal to 80 in the blue and green region. In the blue and green region. Uh, the photolumin, uh, the photoluminescent spectrum involve different luminescence centers relation to silicon vast composites. Uh, principal uh, silicon dandling bonds and nitrogen dandling bonds. Uh, the spectral the photoluminescence uh, show in this figure uh, exhibit all uh, the electron transitions. In the case the for the silicon uh, rich oxides anelet 
1,150 degrees Celsius. Uh, the, the photon spectral uh, present the main peak emission in the red region. In the red region. The maximum uh, photon intensity is obtained for uh, the, the flow rate equal to 20. Uh, Photoluminescence spectrum involved different luminescence centers, uh, principal uh, relative defects and silicon nanoparticles. And uh, in this spectral, uh, in this photoluminescence spectral, exhibit uh, all these uh, electron transitions. Uh, uh, in this figure, uh, show the comparison. The, the comparison between the change of the fabricate condition and the and uh, luminescence properties, um, the the change in the silicon excess concentration, and the, the change in the temperature uh, thermic analytic. So um, the photon intensity of the silicon rich nitro uh, films uh, become stronger has the flow rate increasing. Uh, and uh, the photon intensity decreasing uh, after thermic analytic. Uh, in the case of silicon rich oxides, uh, the, the photon intensity of the films increasing when the analytic temperature increasing. And uh, the maximum emission is obtained for the films with a flow rate uh, equal at, at 20 and 1,150 grades Celsius. Uh, the conclusions, uh, with all information, we can conclude that the all fields present phase separation after thermic analysis. Uh, in the case of the silicon rich nitro, there is a decreasing in the photoluminous intensity after thermic analyzing. Uh, on the other side, uh, silicon rich oxide film increasing in the photoluminous intensity uh, after thermic analyzing. Uh, the maximum uh, photoluminous intensity is obtained is has deposited uh, silicon rich nitro uh, films because the hydrogen present in these films can be, can be, can be passive on uh, some no relative defects, and uh, the maximum emission is obtained for the silicon-rich oxides uh, with the fluor uh, fraction quality uh, equal uh, to 20 and for 1,150 uh, degrees uh, Celsius, which could be attributed to the formation of the silicon nanoparticles. Uh, finally, uh, uh, this field could be candidate for the development of luminescence devices because uh, uh, the oil fields uh, present uh, bitter, um, bitter uh, luminescence property. Uh, the references used in this presentation and uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Jose Juan Magilevs. Any question? How have you found the manipulation points in your work through the slides? Um, uh, I don't understand. Uh, can you repeat me two questions? Yes. In the case of the nucleation points, how do you form or how do you obtain this? How Maybe I don't know you use the uh, like geography. Uh, I mean, I I I, I, I don't get <laughs> the nucleation points. How do you obtain this this point? How obtains this uh, point? A ver, uh, the nucleation points. Ah, okay. Uh, 
The nucleation points uh, are obtained uh, during uh, deposition films. Uh, the system, bueno, the, the LTCBD uh, is, is permit the, the durant, during the deposit, uh, uh, the silicon and bonding silicon uh, in the fins uh, formed the nucleation points. Uh -huh. Nucleation points son, eh, van, are eh, silicon and silicon eh, bonding. Silicon bonding, silicon. Okay. Hello, Juan. Uh, thank you for presentation. Um, I have a question. Uh, when you increase the temperature for your terminal line, uh, your nucleation is the natana particulars is big. Then, um, or why do you intensity photoluminescence decrease? Let's explain it, please. Ah, okay. Um, when the Increasing temperature, uh -huh. uh, the uh, was obtained um, bigger signs of the silicon and a particular. Uh, it it is uh, is um, uh -huh. the bigger nanoparticles. Uh, present uh, the bitter uh, luminescence properties. Uh -huh. uh, uh, oh, uh -huh. uh, oh, no sé. uh, can you repeat the question? <laughs> okay. Uh, when you um, uh -huh. make thermal align your nanoparticles increase, no? Yes, 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 of course. Okay. And then uh, a high temperature, your intensity photoluminescent decrease, no? Or no? Ah, um, Why? in the in the silicon uh, nitro. Uh -huh. uh, a ver. Uh, uh, why? Uh, Uh, in the case the silicon rich nitro, um, the increase in temperature, uh, the photoluminous intensity uh, decreasing uh, because the the photoluminous intensity the, the, this, uh, this 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 material um, uh, the the contribute the uh, the, the electron transition is uh, the defects. Um, uh -huh. No, are not the uh, nanoparticles. So, uh, uh, when the increasing temperature, uh, the bigger uh, nanoparticle is increasing. But uh, no, uh, I I don't know contribute the photonomic intensity. Uh, the, the, the defects uh, are contribute in the photon intensity. Uh, so um, the, the high temperature increasing, the, the, the hydrogen uh, disappear in the, in the electric matrix. Uh, the hydrogen uh, present in these films uh, could be passivate defects no radiative. So the hydrogen disappears after thermic and energy. Uh, this defect uh, not, uh, not contribute the photon intensity. Uh -huh. Gracias. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you again, Jose Juan. 
thank you very much. <laughs> See you. <laughs> See you. And the last speaker, Giovanni Almeida Matos. Giovanni, please, you can start. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Uh, good morning to everyone. I am Giovanni Almeida. I uh, I would like to thank the opportunity to present my work entitled Experimental Decomposition of the Carrier Mobility in Conduction Plans of Two Level Stacked Nanowires. This is my co authors, and Marcelo Pavanello is my advisor. This is the outline of presentation. We are going to start from the introduction where we are going to show you the context of this work and some concepts we are going to use. The next step is the methodology where we talk about the device characteristics and mobility extraction. The next step is the separation of the drain current. We are doing some modeling, some results. The next step is the low field mobility decomposition. We are doing some modeling and show you the results too. And finally, the conclusion. The Moore's law has constantly pushed the semiconductor industry to continually downscaling the device. Multiple gate fats, for example, a thin fat, uh, emerge as a key technology because it's enhanced the gate control of the char channel charts, reducing the short channel effects. The evolution of the thin fats has given rise to what is known as nanowires. Nanowires can be a triple gauge or gauge or round transistor with nanometers dimensions. Vertically stacking two or more nanowires, we get a stack nanowires. The stack nanowires increase the current density within the same footprint area. In stacking nanowires, the carrier transport occurs in different crystallographic plants. As you can see, there is three horizontal conduction plants and four vertical conduction plants. In standard wafer, these plants are the 100 and 1 100 and 110 plants. These plants has a different mobility primarily to the different effective mass of the carrier. Other factors can also uh, impact the different mobility, for example, difference in surface roughness during the fabrication process. The objectives of this work is present to you a method to extract the top and the side wall carrier mobility. This is important because it would aid the process and device optimization, and also it will help to understand and modeling the transport of the carrier in these plants. To the best of knowledge, this is the first work applying this technique in two levels stacked nanowires device based on experimental results. Now I'm going to talk about the device used. The device were fabricated at CLT. They are two level N type silicon stacked nanowires made on SOI wafer with barrier oxide thickness of 145 nanometers. We measured three, three different chips randomly chosen on a wafer. They have 240 fins, 100 nanometers of channel length, 9 nanometers of fin height, and the fin width variable from 10 nanometers to 25 nanometers. The gate stack were formed by titanium nitride, high K oxide, silicon oxide. The channel is a P-type silicon non-intentionally doped and the boreal oxide. The measurement was made directly on the wafer using a key side B 1500 semiconductor parameters analyzers. The drain curves versus gate voltage curves were obtained with a bias step of 10 millivolts and a low drain bias of 15 millivolts. The figure shows the drain current versus the gate voltage in logarithmic and linear scalar. As you can see, there is a minimal variability between the ships. Uh, we made some basic characterization 
the threshold was, was extracted use uh, a second derivative method uh, presenting the figure in the left axis. As you can see, there is a slight dependence of the threshold vote with the thing width. The sub threshold slope posts are also extract, uh, presenting figure in the right axis. As you can see, the sub threshold slope tends to be smaller in narrow device, but all of them are close to theoretical limits. The low field mobility are extracted by I function method. The I function is defined as the drain current over the square root of the transconductance. The transconductance is the der derivative of the drain current with respect to the gate voltage. This method allows us to obtain the beta factor and mobility degradation factor using a recursive algorithm. From the beta factor, it's possible to extract the low field mobility. Now I'm going to show you a schematic to how we are going to extract the mobility to each plan. We are start from the drain current curves. We are going to separate them from the current that flow at the top and the bottom surface and the current that flow at the side walls. Then we fit this current uh, at the I function method. So we got the low field mobility from the top and the side walls. Now, how we are going to separate the, the current that flow at the side walls and top and bottom? We are start from the first order model from transistor in linear region. And we need to say that the current can be expressed as a sum of the current that flow at the top and the bottom and the current that flow at the side walls. Then we can separate the effective mobility and the effective thing with it. They are different in two plans in this equation like this. The gate capacitance, the mobility of the top and bottom times three times fin width because there is three horizontal conduction plans plus the mobility at side walls times four times the fin height because there is four vertical uh, conduction plans, the channel length and the bias condition. As you can see, there is a linear dependence the drain current with the fin width. So if we plot the, the drain currents versus the fin width uh, the, with the transistors with the same height, same length, and the same bias condition, we expect to see a straight line. And we extrapolate this line where the fin width is zero, we got the side walls current. And uh, the top and the bottom current is basically the total drain current minus the side walls current. This is our results. Uh, this is the drain current as a function of the thing with it to uh, various gate bias. As you can see, there is a linear behavior as expected. And extrapolating this line to thing with it as zero, we got the drain current at the side walls. This curve shows the drain current at the side walls. Instead of 10, we got a R square of this extrapolation. As you can see at the threshold voltage, the R square is around 0.85, but quickly increased to 0.99. Uh, this suggests to us that the assumptions made are reasonable when the device are based uh, bias in strong inversion. This figure, figure shows the total current and its components, the top and bottom and the side walls. From transistor to thin width of 10, 15, 20, and 25 nanometers. As you can see, even in device with the thin width and the height are close to each other, the side walls currents are lower. And as the thin width increase, the top and bottom current converge to the total current. Distracting the mobility, we are seeing that the sidewalls side walls mobility are constant with the fin width and is around 40 centimeters square per volt second. The top and bottom mobility are practically constant and is three times higher from uh, than the side walls mobility. Although the top and bottom mobility and side walls mobility is constant constant with the fin width, the effective mobility is due dependent of fin width. This is because 
uh, uh, do the proportion of the total current that flow uh, at by each plan. In other words, in larger device, more current flow through the top and the bottom where the mobility is higher, so the effective mobility is high too. To confirm this, we are back in the slide 11 when we said that the effective mobility times the thing with, uh, effective width is this the sum of these two components. Rearranging this equation is become clear the geometry dependence of the effective mobility. The effective mobility is the mobility of the side walls, plus the difference between the mobility is these geometry terms here. We compare the effective mobility calculated from that equation and the effective mobility is tracked by the I function. And we got a small error with a maximum error of 7%. And the effective mobility calculated from the equation uh, conducting to larger web values regardless the thing with it. Now we are going to talk about the mobility degradation factors. Uh, it's known that mo carrier mobility is degraded by various factors, such as thermal vibration, surface roughness, and we got this e empirical equation that calculate that. And we got the theta 1 and theta 2, that is linear degradation factor and quadratic degradation factor. As I said, these factors can be extracted by a function method. Uh, this figure shows the theta 1 at the left axis and theta 2 at the right axis. As you can see, the theta 1 at the top and bottom and side walls uh, is independent of the thing with it. The side walls theta 1 is minimal and uh, at the top and the bottom are higher. And the effective theta 1 decreases in with the narrow devices, a similar behavior seen of the mobility. The theta 2, the top and the bottom and the side walls are also constant, but they are close to each other, but the effective is reducing in the narrow device too. The conclusions. The current components that flow on each conduction planes were separated using st linear extrapolation, the strong linear behavior indicate that this method is suitable for this technology. Current on the sidewalls is consistently lower than the top and the bottom. The top and bottom mobility remains constant and independent of fin width, and it's, it is three times higher than the, the sidewalls. Although the top and side mobility is uh, constant, the effective mobility is dependent on fin width due to the proportion of the current flow through each plane. Theta 1 at the top and the bottom surface shows a minor dependence on fin width and is higher than the at side walls. The effective mobility shows a slight dependence on fin width, similar behavior seen on mobility. Theta 2 at the top and the bottom and the side surface remain close to each other, but the effective theta 2 decreases in the narrow devices. I would like to thank CAPS, FAPES, and PK for founding this project, and thank you all of you for your attention. Thank you very much, Giovanni Almeida. And we have time just for one question. Critical question? No? Okay. Okay, I have a question. Okay. Um, for the case of the low field mobility decomposition, um, what kind of effects will you have if you add some defects? I'm sorry, can you repeat please? <clears throat> yes, maybe in the in the interfacial defects or or oh, in the structures. If you have some defects, how it affects the low field mobility or the current mobility? The interfacial defects, you see, you talk about the surface roughness. Yes. Ah, uh, this. Uh, 
Excuse me. We talk about this. Uh, yes, it's we found an article that said uh, to make this uh, stack structure, we need to use a technique you call silicon germanium selective uh, edge. Uh, this article talked that when you add this silicon germanium, uh, there is a difference in surface roughness and this impacts the mobility but uh, we don't see that on, on our device in the model it is not some of uh, there are some parameters that you can put this kind of information oh yes 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 the theta 2 Factors is related to surface roughness, but the theta two uh, is also related to other factors such as the phonon scattering. So, from theta two, you can have an idea of how surface roughness is impacting the mobility, but you can just use them. You can use some other factors. Okay. If, thank you. If you don't have more questions, thanks again, Giovanni. Thank you. Um, we have finished this session and see you in the afternoon. Thank you.